I'm Karima Brown. Welcome back to The Fix. Let's dive right into our reporter roundtable and look at what you'll be talking about this week coming. Joining me is Paulie van Veek from the Daily Maverick, Investigative Unit Scorpio, and of course ENCA's Samkele Maseko. And back with me, Peter Bruce, of course Sunday Times columnist. Peter, let me start yeah. with you. In your column this week, mm. you're speaking about a lot of meltdowns. Yeah, We're just um, <laughs> speaking about uh, the Gauteng Premier, but the party that you single out is of course the Democratic Alliance. You're yeah. saying that it faces an identity crisis. Well it just seems to me to be getting worse and not better. In fact <coughs> I, I wonder whether the people in the DA who don't miss Helen Zilla by now, you know, it has, there just seems to be no leadership in the party. Um, it, uh, um, the, the, the DeLille matter has made fools of all of them. She's made fools of them. And um, and I don't think that under under Helen Zilla this would have gotten this this bad. In fact, she's now apparently um, an intermediary between the party and the mayor. Paulie, I heard you saying "shoo" when Peter says the DA might might well be missing uh, Helen Zilla. Do you agree with Peter? I think I really do agree with him. It's a very strong statement. Oh. But I mean, under Helen Zilla, they had a very direct. Uh, goal. We knew what they stood for. We oh. knew where they were going. They told us where they were going and they showed us that they're going there. Now I am actually not sure where they're going, what what their, f their future is, what their stance is on certain things. It's troubling. Samkele, um, the idea that Helen Zilla, even though we don't like her message, was a better leader than Musi Maimani, do you agree? Well, I wouldn't be drawn into that <laughs> debate of whether the one is better or the other one was, is better. Do you but think both are useless? I've got no view on, the, on either two, but all I can say is once a political formation grows its electoral base, it seemingly isolates or is no longer able to solely focus on its core electoral base, which is the suburban areas for the Democratic Alliance. Over the years, through the introduction of Musi Maimani as the DA leader, whether some of him as a poster leader with no backbone, or some of him as an actual leader mm. of the Democratic Alliance, but they've grown the electoral base, included townships, and a certain portion of rural areas. I know in areas such as Opongolo, Mbalintulu was working extensively. That was her constituency when she was still mm. in MPL and KZN. But the DA is not only facing an identity crisis, it also has an ideology crisis now with a broadened base, which includes the black majority in the townships and in the rural areas. For instance, you look at Solim Simanga and the budget passed by Herman Mashabe mm. in Johannesburg. It had to include the township vote, the, the township uh, perspective that is largely represented by the Economic Freedom Fighters mm. and the ANC in Johannesburg. So they are facing an ideological and an identity crisis. Whether Helen Zilla was way better than Musi Mahimani, only the DA membership mm. can judge that. Now we've seen, Peter, that the DA has already, in fact, told us who some of their provincial candidates are going to yeah. be uh, for premiers in the 2019 election. Do you think they're trying to kind of steal a march and get ahead because the Patricia De Lowe thing has just really, well, I think, uh, you know, kept, yeah, kept no, them back? Really done them a lot of damage, and, and um, I think I think what they've done is they have, <coughs> they've announced the people who might be candidates for the provinces. And yeah, I thought it, that's a smart thing to do. I mean, mm. it takes a conversation in a new direction. It's a conversation they can own rather than have other people, you know. But I, I, I noticed one name, and I can't remember who it was now, was a potential candidate in three provinces rather than just one. And some provinces only have David one Mayer. candidate. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but it's a good thing. To, it's a good thing to have done. I think. Talking about what is going to make news headlines, we know, of course, Patricia is going back to court this week coming. But the other matter that is going to set the agenda certainly is, of course, uh, former judge uh, uh, um, or retired judge, rather, Robert Nugent's decision tomorrow about um, how exactly the Commission of Inquiry into Tax Administration and Governance is going to proceed, considering the representations that Mr. Moyani, Tom Moyani, make the suspended uh, governor of the uh, uh, SARS. Do you, do you think, uh, Paulie, that um, the process is going to grind to a halt? Do you think Moyani is going to take another scalp as he did in his disciplinary uh, hearing by getting uh, Justice O'Regan removed? No, he's not. And we know that because um, a retired Judge Nugent told us so. And when you think about it logically, you wonder why uh, Mr. Dalian Porfa actually went to the Commission. Because what he demands is that uh, the commission halts either or totally stops until the disciplinary uh, hearing uh, started by Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa um, has, has stopped their work or finished their work. Mm. Now, 
there's a legal problem with that question is that Mr. Ramaphosa was the one who instituted that commission of inquiry. It ca a commission of inquiry cannot dissolve itself, it cannot stop itself and it can most definitely not fire one of the panelists or one of its advisors or assistants and that is exactly what it's asked to do. So it's very simple. Uh, retired Judge Nugent is just going to tell them, no, I uh, don't have the authority to do that. If you want to do this, or if you want this, you have to go um, and start review proceedings in a court. And then the second thing what, that they asked is that all um, admissions or all uh, witnesses, that their testimonies must be discontinued and totally scrapped from the record. Something that they can also not ask because for the same reason, because two follows on one. And then they also want um, Mr. Muyani's legal fees be paid by SARS, which is not, there's no precedent for that. So I don't think that they will succeed on that point either. The point that I think they may succeed on is where they ask that none of the uh, matters that's being discussed in the disciplinary hearing mm. will also be discussed in the Commission of Inquiry. Now there is a legal precedent for, so you cannot, there's a, there's a, um, a precedent that or a rule that we label um, the double jeopardy where you cannot um, where, where it's uh, difficult for a person to come and testify before two commissions or two inquiries mm -hmm. and he cannot imply himself before the one when he's still to be heard by the other. Mm -hmm. uh, Sankele, what do you think lies behind the strategy of Tom Moyani in the instance of the broader commission into governance and administration because of course it has to deal with uh, governance under his tenure so it does talk to his issues around leadership doesn't it? Well, one, ca one thing we've got to question here, Karima, is why did Tom Moyane make an overnight turn on the 11th hour to appear on, on, uh, on behalf of the commission and have Dalim Bofu speak on his behalf? And also, were Thursday's revelations by one of the senior legal representatives within SARS, hmm. who says she basically wanted 2.2 million rands for reading newspapers and a 30% bonus, which is about 660,000 rands, for just sitting there and doing nothing, being rewarded by Tom Moyane, so shut up. But Tom Moyani may as well, maybe will protect this whole process until his term of office mm. ends, because he knows his term of office will not yeah, be Yeah, he's renewed, close to retirement Which age. will probably be next year, September, when his term of office ends. Protect this as much as possible. He's already asked the president for an out-of-court settlement to Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of the republic, has basically, I said, I offered you that, you rejected me, why, why now? No, let's go on with the disciplinary process. So you think he just wants to prolong the whole matter? He will prolong the whole matter. It will not reach probably finality. If they don't get what they want on Monday, they'll probably approach the courts with Advocate Dalim both to seek a legal recourse on that and protect the matter as long as they can until his term of office expires. And then nobody will probably remember Tom Moyani existed at SARS. Is, is Mr. Moyani learning at the feet of former President Jacob Zuma? I don't know whether Jacob Zuma is going to hire Dali and Porfu next <laughs> when, he, when, he, when he goes to trial. But he probably should because, you know, Dali, I mean, on, with the DA and now with. Uh, uh, Tom Moyani is like throwing a Molotov cocktail into a, into a process. I mean, he's able to, he's entertaining, you know what I mean? And he's, um, he's able to sort of break people's rhythm and, 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 uh, and change direction. So I have no idea what's going to happen, and I'm very interested. I mean, can, can, does Paulie, do you think that he, that, that he can drag this thing out for a year? Mm. I think it will be difficult. They must start review proceedings if they would wish to do so, and that costs money. Yeah. SARS is refusing at the moment to fund it, and Mr. Ramaphosa are same. So you'll have to get that battle and to win that battle first if you want to prolong it. Yeah. Maybe you should ask Dali if he's going to work pro bono for, for, for Tom uh, yeah, Peter. Yeah, I think I know what the answer <laughs> to that would be. <laughs> <laughs> what would that answer be there? <laughs> I, I think it's really interesting that there are, of course, two processes, poorly. I mean, um, when exactly is Azar Bar mean to get on with his work and is the one contingent on the other? No, they're not supposed to be. And remember, this is not an inquiry into Tomiyani. This is an inquiry into SARS that also corresponds with a little more than his term in office. And it is important um, to, to ensure that we know that there are other role players here as well. Mr. Makwakwa and the whole leadership of SARS will be 
under the magnifying glass. It's not about Mr. Muyani, although he is the boss. This is the nature. If you are the boss, you will be questioned. Mm -hmm. The disciplinary hearing is focused on Mr. Muyani. Mr. Ramaphosa said that I lost faith in you. These are the reasons, and you must answer to that because I don't want you as the commissioner anymore, and I want to replace you. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go to the uh, provincial conference coming up, uh, Sam Kele, I just want to ask you, Peter, mm -hmm. The rebuilding of SARS is, of course, critical. It's mm. almost as critical as getting the state-owned companies to function. Yeah. Do you think that by this saga playing itself out, that it hampers uh, the state's ability to get tax morality going, to get mm. people to believe in the authority again, no, and no, that it'll be it able to I do its job? I think it job? improves it, actually. I think it makes it easier. And I think people like Paulie's reporting and, and, and people who are really covering the story well are cheering up the country in a way. I mean, because we, we're we are beginning to understand um, just just how close we came to disaster with yeah. with, with, uh, with Moyani running the show. He knows nothing about tax, and um, uh, and and it shows he may have raised a trillion rand, but the trillion would have been uh, uh, anyway. He was yeah. still fifty billion behind. Absolutely. Samkele, we've just heard uh, Premier David Makura says that he's available. Uh, we know that there's a conference in two weeks. Um, we also know that several regional conferences have happened, but there have been people that have been unhappy and that have gone to court. Mm -hmm. Where is that process at right now? I mean, are these processes just going to run smoothly, or are there court processes that will interfere with this conference coming uh, you know, together in two weeks' time? The only court process or litigation process that was underway, from my understanding, was today the Ekuruleni Regional Conference. Some disgruntled members who, who went, even delegates, tried to interdict that provincial conference, that regional conference, rather, which was ending today. They tried to interdict it and stop it, but they couldn't succeed. The conference uh, proce the proceeded, and Zwandile Masina was re elected uh, as uh, the regional chairperson there. But I do not see the Gauteng Provincial Conference being interdicted, but in the words of Hope Up, the Provincial Secretary whom we spoke to earlier on today, he said that if there is a court interdict mm. against uh, the Provincial Conference sitting in two weeks, they, will, they are prepared to defend the ANC. But the, the biggest test for the ANC, they've passed it in Ekuruleni. Now it's going to be one of the troublesome regions politically which has been unstable for the longest of time, for instance, uh, probably eight months towards the local government elections which, in 2016. Which is this? this is the Tswane region, which is led by Khosian Zora Maho mm. Pasputla, whom has also been raised in some quarters as a mm. possible candidate yes. for the position of provincial chairperson. I am not yet sure if he's going to meet threshold, because if you look at internal dynamics of the ANC and the history of all of these leaders, Sputla, Khosian Zora Maho and Khoshimaepe, who is running for the regional chairperson of, mm. uh, of Tswane, Hoshimaepe and uh, David Makura come a long, long way. way. They come yeah. together from student politics, SASCO, and that relationship has impact. And interestingly, I was in Lombopo over the weekend. Guess who was there? David Makura and Hoshimaepe. Mm -hmm. That should tell you of the political dynamics happening in Tswane. For instance, if you look at Gauteng, Gauteng is trying to move away from the era of Paul Mashatile. Yeah. And seemingly, David Makura is moving away from Paul Mashatile's shadow and trying to have an, an, an ANC with his own identity. If you look at the Greater Johannesburg Regional Conference, Geoff Makubo was elected unopposed. There's no shadow of doubt. Mm. He is David Makura's man. In Ekuruleni, you've got Mzwandi Masina, who was seemingly at loggerheads with the then provincial chair, Paul Mashadile, but it's the same Paul Mashadile who saved his skin mm. when the region was about to be disbanded. So now you've got Lebohang Mayile, who is perceived as Paul Mashadile's boy and part of the so-called Alex Mafia. Mzwandi Lamasina is pushing Lebohang Maile for the position of deputy chairperson. You've heard David Makura here say they'll be electing a dynamic uh, leadership that will surprise many and with generational mix. But but the, the, the generational mix is the interesting I, thing, yes? Well, I mean, if do I try to explain any of that to <laughs> you know, my family back home, I'd get it all wrong. Yeah. What I'm interested in is, is the, necess the necessity for the premiership and the chairmanship to belong to be the same person. I mean, is it still important in the ANC? The ANC has always had this discussion of two centers of power. Yeah. For instance, if you look at the somewhat not so messy breakup, such as that of Patricia DeLille and the DA, but that breakup of resistance between President Jacob Zuma and the ANC's ANC sure. when they asked him to resign, it coincides the premiership, the chairpersonship of the ANC pretty much guarantees you 
the, the premiership, premiership of the province. For instance, you look at how Sihles Digalala is fighting so hard to be the provincial chair of KwaZulu Natal, but he'll basically be uncontested in that position. You can see the same happening in Gauteng, where you have a David Makura elected unopposed as the provincial chair of Gauteng. For instance, there are dynamics in the ANC now where people who may not particularly agree yeah. with David Makura do not want to contest those who are close to Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of the ANC, because that would be seen as a direct fight to the president. You know, Peter, for me, it's always interesting because if you, for example, look at the Northwest, you have a situation where you have uh, Professor Mahoro now, the uh, the premier, yeah. and you have, uh, um, you know, Mr. Mauma Pelo as the yeah. provincial chair. And there's a big debate of whether he will, in fact, still continue and whether that PEC will continue. In the Eastern Cape, you also have two centers sure. of power. The premier is in the provincial chair. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, the ANC is its own internal mechanisms are beginning to kind of almost bump up, you know, against each other. And the traditional view that if you are the provincial chair, you will also end up being the candidate to be the premier and eventually rule has been disturbed by uh, the divisions within the organization. So it's not as clear, you know, as, as always. The other thing, of course, making news this week, uh, Peter and, and Paulie and, and, and Sam, is the, the passing of the iconic photographer David Goldblatt. Now, um, I remember, uh, you know, Know, a lot of his work uh, dealing particularly with structural uh, inequalities in South Africa and particularly spatial inequalities mm -hmm. uh, the structure of things his last work was the, the one seminal work and of course a lot of it is hanging in the Goodman Gallery down the road uh, here in Rosebank um, what do you take away from from you know his, his photography do you think that that we will have photographers like this again Pauline we should certainly look up to them. And I know some fantastic photographers. I mean, Felix Langamandla of Media 24 is one of mm. the best. And I think that he would definitely walk in those shoes. Yeah. Um, what made Mr. Goldblatt special was that he had a certain interesting way of looking at life. He pictured life and he showed us uncomfortable life that we did not know of and that we did not necessarily agree with or did that we didn't know about. Um, and that was special about him and he would find an interesting twist and, and show us things that, that almost makes you want to change things. And that is a very special gift. Uh, my panel, thank you so very much. Pauli van Wyk, of course, also from uh, Daily Maverick. Sam Kele uh, Maseko from ENCA. And, of course, uh, Peter Bruce, uh, thank you so very much. Uh, that was our panel of journalists. Up next, how, of course, we look at um, reading and what reading does and how readers become writers. This is The Fix, where we also look at the cool stuff. <laughs>